Guitar amps continue to be used in live and recording applications despite the plethora of software emulations that now exist for computer or even iOS. But how do you do it then? Well, we've got to mic this thing up. It's a musical instrument. It's a box with a speaker in. So we've got to do, do this in the right way and in the sympathetic way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, I've got lots of different mics here in terms of the distance from the amp and things like where you put it in relation to the center of the speaker or the edge. And let's have a look. Now to aid comparison, I have a loop pedal here and I've just recorded the following loop. So there's my guitar sound. I just recorded that just now with my guitar and I've got an SM58 AKG C414, I've got a Coles 4038 and I've got a Sennheiser E609. I also have a pair of AKG C3000s as a stereo pair, but ambient, because actually that makes quite a difference as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play that loop and I'm going to first of all demonstrate the what happens when you move the mic from the center to the outside. So while the loop is progressing, you will see that I basically move the mic to the, the edge of the speaker and you'll hear a difference in the sort of treble content. Let's have a look at that. And there we are. So I brought in the stereo pair just at the end. I just pointed to the, the mics that are off, uh, off the camera at the moment, but they are essentially capturing what's going on in the room. Don't forget that a guitar amp or any musical instrument on earth needs a space to be heard and actually it affects the, the sound overall. You know, if you're playing this in a big room with stone walls or a wooden floor or something, the thing is going to change. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play that loop and I'm going to put a few different mics in front of it so you can hear the difference between all of these microphones. So the Shaw, I basically placed uh, to the outside of the speaker and slightly away from it. So I'm going to do a similar thing. I'm just going to leave it in one position so that you can hear the difference between these mics. So first of all, the Shaw SM58. Then I'm going to bring the Sennheiser mic down. Now this is a specially designed for guitar amps in that you can just hang it like that. And you can hang it off the, the top of the amp. It saves you mic stands when you're uh, recording or out playing live. So here we are with the Shaw SM58 first, then the Sennheiser. Then I'm going to bring the AKG C414 in. And then lastly, the Coles. Now, halfway through each one, I'm going to bring in the stereo pair so that you can see how they add to the overall picture. So, Shaw SM58 first. <laughs> And so there are all the microphones. Now, the Coles is a ribbon mic and as such has a lot of middle range detail. So actually, when you've got an amp that's quite toppy like this, it could be nice to have a little bit of a darker sound, but it's up to you. Now, of course, this is YouTube. So there is going to be some compression applied to the video, which happens when you upload. So if you're after extreme audio fidelity and, and sort of scientific differences between these mics, you're sure not going to get it on YouTube. And also I'm sat in a fairly dead room. So the stereo mics, yes, they pick up a little bit of ambience, but it's it really the space 
um, is important as well as the mic, as well as the leads, as well as your pedals, the guitar amp, the guitar, the guitarist. There are so many variables, but actually this gives you something that modern emulations don't really give you all that much because you've got all of this control. It's not just whatever. You can have sort of various options with mics you use and off axis, but in terms of direction and positioning of the amp, really having the physical thing in the room with you is really going to help. Now, of course, when you're dealing with something that is a sort of a distortion, I'll tell you what, I'm going to record something else and this time use the drive channel of the guitar amp so that you can hear that because the distortion channel essentially has a lot more top end because of all the harmonics, that will actually make a difference to your miking. So I'm going to uh, record something. I'm going to start again with the SM58 um, and I'm going to record a loop and then you'll hear it with the stereo uh, pair that I've just put in here. So I'm just going to select the drive channel and see what happens with that. So here we go. many variables in place, so many things that can be done. But of course, we've just got to consider the genre you want as well. So if you want a really bright sound, if you want sort of really tinny sound, perhaps you could use a condenser mic, or you could use something like the Coles if you want something a bit darker. Now, no EQ has been applied to any of these mics, except for an overall sort of bass cut, anything below about 80, 100 hertz, just to for the YouTube uh, demonstration, so there's not lots of really low frequencies sort of hanging about. Now, that is, that does become a problem. If you turn up a guitar amp very, very loudly, you get sort of heightened levels of bass because actually the amp is less able to control the movement of the speaker and therefore you're going to get some sort of subsonic, some very low frequencies there. But if you cut below about 100 hertz, you won't hear those on your recording. So there we go, there's a, a plethora of mics, a couple of different sounds, and just overall a little bit of a difference between those mics.